Realised that in a few months' time the nation's second sport, football, will be celebrating its World Cup. And within that there will be players who are trying to make themselves look quite tough and hard, but it's difficult when you're wearing nylon shirts and a ponytail. But, to give an example of the difference between football and my sport rugby, I will have to take you back to the World Cup in France in 1998. England against Argentina, a match made famous for two reasons. Michael Owen's wonder goal and David Beckham being sent off. And why was he sent off? For a vicious, vicious tackle. <laughs> for those of you who didn't see it or don't remember it, I will try and paint a picture. Diego Simeone was the recipient of David Beckham's foul play. He tripped him up. The poor lad fell over, mud on his shorts, one of his socks rolled down, and his Alice band fell out of his hair. It was horrific. The crowd was in a state of shock. The press destroyed Beckham for the next few years. The referee's reaction, no hesitation. Beckham, red card, you're off. The very next day, the England rugby team played against South Africa at Ellis Park in Johannesburg. The England hooker, Richard Cockrell, a man voted most likely to marry outside his own species, <laughs> Punched his opposite number, James Dalton, in the face and broke his nose. Blood everywhere. Excellent. Dalton didn't fall over, didn't cry, didn't run to the referee. He just twatted him back. <laughs> broke his nose. The crowd loved it. The press described it as a minor altercation. The referee's reaction, gentlemen, shake hands. That was it. Two grievous bodily harms, and you get a personal introduction. <laughs> it's just a different class. And so there I was as this young lad trying to find my way in the England team, and my mentor, the man that I was understudy to, was a guy called Wade Dooley. Some of you will know Wade Dooley. Those of you who don't, you'll get an idea of what I'm dealing with. We were playing against France in 1992. There was a bit of a fight, and during the course of it, someone did what people always used to do, punched Wade Dooley. Now, Wade Dooley, six foot eight, 20 stone, 0% body fat, big man. Ladies, big man. He would walk out of a shower, and we would just applaud. This guy punched Wade, and we used to view this as sporting euthanasia. What was unusual about this particular punch is actually not Wade Dooley unconscious. We'd never seen this before. Big and daft lying there. And you know when it's a good punch, when the referee goes up to the man and shakes his hand. <laughs> and so we're looking at Wade thinking, we need a bit of a miracle here because the French, this has boosted their confidence. We got it from Wade. He rebooted his brain cell. <laughs> opened his middle eye. Looked at the referee. Looked at Olivier Rumar, the French player. And this voice boomed out around the Parc des Princes. Every Frenchman who heard it, their blood would have gone on icy cold. Ref... Do not send that fucker off. <laughs> you, you've never seen blood drain from a man's face quite so quickly. So rugby was a big part of my life, and then I retired from rugby, and life changes a little bit, and it um, gets a bit interesting. And for the last ten years, I think it's probably just come to a close now, uh, I got involved in the Harry Potter films, as uh, I've been... Robbie Coltrane's ass as, uh, as his stunt double for Hagrid the Giant for the last 10 years. It's a job. Um, but of course, as I'm sure you appreciate, being Robbie Coltrane's ass doesn't require an enormous amount of speaking. But it has given me this taste for acting, and quite stupidly, I think, yeah, I'll be an actor. So the years went by and nothing came my way. I was very excited, though, when a few years ago I did get a call from my agent, because I now have an agent saying, I've got to go to this place and I've got a part in a TV series called New Tricks. Now, all of you will realise that preparation is vital, whether it's in industry, business, a home, whatever it may be, and in sport, preparation is absolutely vital. So I turn up where I'm meant to be and I am playing rugby player two. So not only do I not have a name, I'm not even rugby player one. I'm rugby player two. Doesn't matter. And what I'm, apparently I'm going to be doing is having a shower with four other men 
in a rugby club shower room. Great, looking forward to this, but I don't mind. I went to public school. Walk in the park. So they do the rehearsals, and we're told because of the camera angle, <coughs> excuse me, because of the camera angle, we can wear swimming trunks or a towel, it's fine. So we do the rehearsals, change of mind. Actually, we're going to see you completely. You're going to have to be naked. Is that a problem? Of course not. It's not a problem for me, not a problem for the other guys, apart from one guy. He's slightly concerned. So we're in the change rooms, getting ready. He goes, um, but we're going to be naked. Yeah, but, you know, we're going to be naked. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. They're going to show the back of you. It's fine. Yeah, but I want to look good. Well, just do some press-ups and a few sit-ups, you know. No, I mean, I want to look good. I said, well, just, you know, find a quiet corner and put a bit of wind in your sails and you'll be fine. <laughs> <coughs> so we're in this change room and as in common with most rooms, four corners, five blokes, difficult for us all to find a corner. <laughs> all getting ready. The director walks in. Gentlemen, are you ready? Yes, 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 yes. A slightly panicked, no? What's the matter? I think I've overdone it. 